You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast, and this is episode number 82. Hey friends, welcome to the podcast. If you are joining me for the first time, I am JC, your host, and I've been running this podcast for a while now. Um, I think it's been over a year. I'm gonna have to check on that. Um, I've been doing it so long, I forgot. But I know that we are approaching the 100th episode, and it's pretty exciting. We have been diving into testimonies this season, and we have been featuring a new guest every week, someone willing to share their story of victory in Jesus with us. If you've been tuning in since the beginning of the series, I hope that you have been enjoying them as much as I have enjoyed sharing them with you. If you have been blessed by this podcast at all, can you please do me a favor and leave a five-star review in iTunes? Not only is it an encouragement to me, but it also helps the podcast be seen when people search. I just think more people need to hear these testimonies and leaving a positive review is a free way for you to help make that happen. All right, guys, I really love this conversation that I have for you on the podcast today with Azure D. Oxidine. Azure D. and I connect on growing up with bad attitudes and how we still struggle to have self-control in that area. Can I get an amen? She shares her journey from being Baptist to becoming apostolic and how being a young mom helped her realize the things that she needed to lay down at the feet of Jesus. So let's get into this real, real talk right now. This is episode number 82 that I am calling Attitudes and Self-Control with Azure D. Oxidine. Hey guys, I'm JC. Are you ready for real conversations about faith, business, and life? Me too. This is the Hello Awesome podcast where I bring forth topics and truthful insights that will encourage you to make intentional choices and pursue God with your whole heart. Are you ready to say hello to the awesome blessings that God has for you? All right, let's do this. Just a quick note about this new series called Testify. It does contain adult content and will not be suitable for young children. So if you have young children around, I suggest that you listen to this on some headphones, on some earbuds, so that their little ears can stay pure and can stay innocent. Thank you for understanding. The seasons might be changing, but our amazing sponsors are sticking around to bring some deals exclusively to Hello Awesome listeners. Nuggles desires every lady to embrace modesty with style and comfort. I love the durable materials they use and all the fun patterns to choose from. Use the 10% off code HelloAwesome10 during checkout at Nuggles.us to snag your new favorite fall outfit right now. If you're looking for super cute scrunchies that'll last in your hair all day, and yes, even long hair to your knees like mine, look no further than So Vita. I use them every day. Use coupon code PODCAST for 10% off your order right now at sovita.com. That's S-E-W-V-I-D-A.com. Get that hair off your neck and into a cute top knot with one of their scrunchies right now as you go grab that pumpkin spiced latte this fall. Blue Thistle Taylor has timeless dresses, skirts, and handbags. Mandy truly has classic modest pieces that you will love for years to come. Just use our special code HelloAwesome for 20% off your order on BlueThistleTaylor.com. That's B-L-U-E-T-H-I-S-T-L-E-T-A-I-L-L-U-E-R.com. Answer me this. Are you ready to switch out your toxic bath and body products for a better option? Rachel over at Oneness Essentials can hook you up. She makes handmade soap, body butter, and lotion that not only look and smell amazing, but they're great for sensitive skin. Use code HelloAwesome for 15% off your order when you shop at OnenessSoapBiz.com. Nestled in a lovely brick and mortar store in Starks, Louisiana, Dressed Like an Angel represents the beauty of modesty through their stunning dresses, skirts, extenders, layer tops, and more. They even carry items for young girls, like their best-selling lace tights. Use our exclusive discount code HelloAwesome for 10% off your order at 
dresslikeanangel.com. A special thank you to all my sponsors who want to bless Hello Awesome listeners. I appreciate you and thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Okay, I forgot one more thing. Have you been blessed by the ministry of Hello Awesome on Instagram and here on the podcast? Consider becoming part of our exclusive membership program on Patreon. When you sign up today, you will unlock access to over 10 posts featuring devotional downloads, ebook and audiobook files for my new book, Give It to God Girl, printable, modest fashion coloring pages, and the latest episodes of my brand new mini podcast series, The Real 15, which is only available to members. I post a new episode every week and will continue bringing special access to some really awesome content. Think of it like a secret club, and this is your invitation. Tap the link in the description of this episode or go to patreon.com backslash hello awesome. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com backslash hello awesome to become a member and start enjoying your full all access pass today. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hello Awesome podcast. I'm here with another amazing guest. I cannot believe that I've met so many incredible people on Instagram. It's so easy to think that it's just an app, but honestly, I found just such cool, cool people on there. And Azurdy, you are definitely an amazing, cool person. I'm so thankful that you are here with me. Can you just share who you are and what you do with everybody? Okay. So my name is Azurdy Oxendine. I have two kids, Michaela Oxendine and Jeremiah Oxendine. I went to college, got my bachelor's degree in political science pre-law. So in the future, I'm hoping to go to law school. I'm 41 years old right now, so I know time is going by fast, but that's still like in my future, so I haven't like put it to the side. Um, I am, I'm a member of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina, and I work at Purdue Agribusiness as a clerk. That's amazing. Um, before we get started on your testimony can you just share with us what's the Lumbee tribe okay so the Lumbee tribe is the largest tribe east of the Mississippi um we are from North Carolina there's about 55,000 members so in 1885 the tribe was recognized as Indian by the state of North Carolina so they've been like fighting since then to be federally recognized but in um 1956 Congress passed the Lumbee Act, which recognized the tribe as Indian. And the, Lum- the Lumbees got their name from the Lumber River, which is a river that runs through here. And they actually, you might as well say they gave that name to themselves because like when the first settlers started coming in, they were like, we were being called Cherokees, we were being called other tribes, but um, Lumbee is mm-hmm. what the tribe gave to itself. That's incredible. And actually, you are not the first person um, who's part of a tribe that has been on here. So this is really exciting. So you sent me your testimony and I was just kind of blown away because I feel like all of these testimonies, when we when we put this uh, series together, um, everybody has their own special story because that's how God works. He's a unique God. But it's amazing how many simula- similarities how many similarities are in each story? I wanted you to just share how it was growing up and what your first experience with church in general was like. So growing up, we um, we went to a Baptist church. My daddy was a preacher, and we were in church every Sunday. And I know it was a Baptist church, but we like we weren't allowed to wear pants at all. So we couldn't wear pants to church. And just like through through like elementary years, middle school years, we went to a Baptist church. And probably when I was in high school is when I claimed I was a Christian. And mm-hmm. my attitude, my okay, my attitude was bad. But <laughs> I always said like I was a Christian. I didn't do anything wrong. But I could get mad and I would say something like, you know, don't make me lay my religion down. But like in my mind, I'm like, If you're a Christian, you wouldn't be laying your religion down for anything. Mm, Yeah. 
so um, I graduated high school, and I think it was the year after, maybe, okay, I graduated in 1996, 1997, you know, I was praying that the Lord would send me to a church where I would grow because I wasn't getting what I needed from my church, and a church that would, you know, show me the truth, and that was one thing, I always wanted to be baptized, but I never, I never got baptized in my church because I wanted to make sure I was doing it right. Mm. So in 1997, so when I met Greg, and of course I invited him to church because he had to church because we went to church every Sunday. So we, you know, he went to a couple services and finally he was like, you know, if we're going to go to church, we're going to go to my church. Mind you, he wasn't in church, but he, he grew up in the Pentecostal church. So he refused to come back to mine. So that first Sunday that I went to his church, I was getting ready. And my mama, she was like, you can't wear that dress to that to that church. And I'm like, mom, I can wear anything I want to wear. <laughs> Which I wore it anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't nothing bad. It was a long dress. It didn't have any sleeves in it. So that's that's the only thing that was wrong with it. But nobody said anything to me. And, like, the first service that I attended, I loved it. I mean, the music was amazing. I think that's what caught my attention because I love to sing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, when you were talking about, you know, your attitude in high school and about your clothes, I was kind of chuckling because that's exactly how I was. And (laughs) um, it sounded like you were way more church than I was for sure. Um, And even it's, it's just something that it's so human to do. And it's like, even now, and I'm sure you can probably testify to this is even now as a grown adult, you still catch yourself saying that once in a while. (laughs) So I think that's so interesting that for some reason in your spirit, you knew that you didn't have all the truth. Right. What do you think made you want to reach out and pray and to seek more truth? What do you think that was? You know what? I really don't know. I just knew something was missing. And I knew baptism was important and that I only needed, you know, to do it one time. So I don't, it was just in my spirit. It wasn't anything Mm -hmm. that I encountered because I don't, like, I don't remember going to school with any any people that were like holiness or Pentecost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I find that interesting as I'm listening to you talk, because I feel like that was the same way with me is I just, I was brought up Catholic. So it's okay. definitely different than Baptist and definitely different than Pentecost. Um, it's a little bit more reserved where you don't shout or say anything at all. You just be quiet and kneel and stand when they tell you to. Um, but but, you know it laid a foundation and so that was a good thing it at least got me thinking about God and so Mm -hmm. I relate to what you were talking about when you said that you felt like there was there was something missing that you didn't have all the truth because I felt that same way and I'm pretty sure um I'm pretty sure a lot of people who come into the church feel that too Mm -hmm. so so can you share with us how it was the first couple of years you were going um to the Pentecostal church. I know you shared that you started going. Um, How did that happen that you started attending it a little bit more? Okay. So 1997 is when I think I went a couple times, me and Greg went, you know, he wasn't in church, so he wasn't really going to church. Okay. So let me back up. So, okay. I got pregnant with Michaela in 1997. So by the time I went back in 1998, I had Michaela. Mm -hmm. And in 1998, I was still going to church, you know, just because I liked the service. I wasn't really, I don't know, I guess I wasn't catching the concept of church per se. I love the music. So that's, that's what was pulling me in. So I went and then 1999, I was still going. Nothing really changed. I was just going. And um, I remember my friend telling me, she was like, you know, you, you can't be Pentecostal. No, she was like, you can't, what was it she said? Hold on. You can't come to this Pentecostal church and be Baptist. That's what she said. And I'm like, uh, yes, I can. 
<laughs> but I didn't realize what she was saying at that time. So in 2000, 2000, I think it was in June or July is when I was baptized and <laughs> baptized in Jesus name. And I was filled with the Holy Ghost, but I still, still wasn't really catching the concept of it, of church because I think around here, everybody has that mindset of you can do what you want to do and still be in church, but that's not, that's not the way, that's not the way it is because mm -hmm. you can't do whatever you want to do and be in church. So I actually, I got pregnant with Jeremiah and me and Greg, like we weren't married. So I got pregnant with Jeremiah and then Sunday in my spirit, I felt really bad because here I am. I'm a young mother. I'm not me. I have two kids out of wedlock. And I'm like, I knew people were going to talk about me. Uh, well, that's just what I felt in my spirit. I didn't have a problem, you know, when I was pregnant with Michaela because I wasn't in church. But with Jeremiah, it was different. So I prayed. I was like, Lord, I know I had this child out of wedlock. So I want you to take him. Take him right now in my stomach and use him for your kingdom. So after that, after that moment, I started walking the straight and narrow path. Me and Greg, let's see, I had Jeremiah July 2001. Then me and Greg, we got married August 2001. Hmm. I think that's so incredible that, you know, it was just a journey, one step at a time, a little bit here and a little bit there for you. Because that's how it is sometimes. I want to hopefully encourage people that if they're working with someone or they have hope for their family members or they have hope for their friends and they come once in a while, just hold on to that hope because we don't know when God is going to do something amazing in their life. Right. So right now, I mean, when you're looking back and you see the transformation of who you used to be, I have, a, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Okay. If you could talk to that strong-willed young girl in the beginning, if you could talk to her right now, what would you say to yourself? Oh, wow. You could take time. You could that's a loaded question. <laughs> well, this is what I think, JC. If I, if I, like, think that I don't want to – I don't want to regret any step that I've mm -hmm. taken because I would regret having my children at such an early age because I was young. I was 18 when I had Michaela. So I don't regret that. It was, it was steps that I took that I had to, I had to grow up and be an adult, I guess. Mm -hmm. And my, just, okay, this is something I want to start with new. Okay, say so my, my daddy died in um, 1993. It was my freshman year going to, um, I'm sorry, my freshman year of high school. But before he died, he gave me a book. And it it was titled Your Attitude. So I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm. So like my daddy knew how I was. So my attitude was horrible. It was bad. I mean, I was just I was just bad. I would run off at the mouth to anybody. I didn't care who it was, man, woman, old person, you know, adult. I I just like I just didn't care. So I, um, if I could talk to myself, I probably would tell myself to have more like self control, and just be prepared what you what you know what what you're about to face. But I I wouldn't go back and regret any any decisions that I made because mm -hmm. I am where I am right now because of that. Yeah, yeah, and I think most of us will say the same thing because we have to go through a journey. I was. Yeah. I was definitely curious what, what you would tell your strong-willed attitude self because I am a Puerto Rican. So okay. <laughs> attitude is in our blood, okay? So that's something that I have to lay down at the feet of Jesus every day. <laughs> yes. And, you know, it is very difficult once you're dealing with people and you have kids and a husband and all that or even just being around people. Um, yes. When you become an adult, you realize you can't have that same attitude, right? Right. You do. You realize at some point you have to mature. You have to kind of get over that. But, you know, like 
at, there's some things that we hold on to when we're like kids or young adults that um, we, we're going to have to lay down. Right. And especially when we learn who God is and we learn who, mm-hmm. how Jesus is. And then we realize, okay, Lord, I'm not that way. I'm going to need you. I'm going to need your help right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? Um, I would love it if you would just speak a word of encouragement to any girl out there right now who might feel like they can do whatever they want and they can wear whatever they want. Um, even though they are going to church, maybe they have that attitude that you and I had. Maybe, maybe they're just a very strong willed person, uh, that we know God's going to use for his glory, but how can you encourage somebody else who might be going through that right now? (laughs) Okay. So it took me, it took me a while to like stop wearing my oh, short dresses, low cut dresses, because I didn't really realize like what I was doing. But you know, wearing tight clothes and wearing low tops or really short skirts, we are like really um getting the attention of guys that we shouldn't even be getting attention you know we shouldn't be getting getting attention from especially guys that are in church like you know it's like we're causing a disturbance so that's i guess that's something to think about how are you making somebody else's husband feel when you shouldn't be making them feel like you know feel like that so self-control will come from us staying in the word and praying and okay to me that that is something really important and this is a scripture that I pray daily Lord let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight oh Lord my strength and redeemer there's there's like stuff that we do we like we we know what we're doing but somebody else doesn't really know but the Lord does so we got the Lord knows our intentions and at the end of the day, we are in control of our attitude, of our actions. You know, there's no situation, there's no circumstance that comes, like, in front of us. Just, it doesn't matter what they're doing. We're, like, we're in control of what we do, what we say, our actions, our facial expressions, what we're thinking. We're in control of that, not somebody coming against us, not um, a bad situation or somebody getting an attitude with you. Because it's easy. It, it's so easy for somebody to get an attitude with you and your flesh to jump back and say something. Mm -hmm. But every morning I say this every day on Facebook, start your day with prayer, the word, a song and a smile, because that smile is on our face. We're showing the joy of the Lord. That song, we have a song in our heart and prayer and the word that the Bible is our roadmap day. We got to stay in it daily. We got to have that relationship with God daily. Yeah, I agree. And I think one of the hardest things is actually doing it because we hear all the time, we hear it over the pulpit, we hear it in lessons, and it's easy for us to get an attitude, roll our eyes and say, okay, I heard that already. Yeah, I know. (laughs) It's easy for us to, you know, just kind of dismiss it with our own attitude of like, I already know that, stop telling me, Um, because that's my attitude. Is and a lot of that for me, what God showed me is, is pride. You know, a lot of the attitude is like we're, we're very prideful, we're haughty, we think we know it all. Nobody can teach us anything, but the Bible also says that we need to be teachable. You know, mm-hmm. and in order for us to grow and be better people, we have to listen and we have to grow. And I'm just so thankful for you, you know, sharing your testimony and sharing your story. I'm glad you shared about the power of the word because that was the same for me. Coming mm-hmm. from a Catholic background, we didn't really have that. Um, we had their special books, but we didn't have Bible teaching. And okay. when I first started reading the Bible, I did it because I wanted to know what it said. <laughs> I didn't want to keep guessing like everybody else was telling me stuff, but I want to know, okay, but what does it say? I want to read these words for myself. And, and I wanted to know for you, you know, going back to your modesty journey, can you just share why now that you're older and you see and you see your life, can you share like why for you it's just so important to be that example of modesty? Okay. 
Hey, let, let me, let me just go all the way back to like third grade when I was like a kid. I love, I love wearing dresses. I had little frilly dresses that I always wore in third grade every single day. Um, and going into like high school, I wore, okay, so maybe I wasn't like fully covered, but I still, I wore dresses. And when I like, when I came into Pentecost, it took me a little while to get adjusted to the layering of clothes. Cause I'm like, okay, what is going on here? So I made sure my, my knees were covered, chest was covered, my arms were long, you know, my sleeves were long enough. But like I was taking that, you know, the way I was dressing, because I have a daughter, which um she's not in church anymore. But I tried to make sure she seen how I was dressing, like a lady, you know, being presentable in the presence of God, because we are his kids and we should be dressed our best. But um, I guess once I started getting into the dress and <clears throat> like working out, I always make sure I have a pair of leggings on in front of my skirt. So I still work out in my skirt, which it doesn't, um, it doesn't stop me eating. So I have enough, you know, stretch where I can move. So it doesn't, I, I can do anything in a skirt, in a dress. It doesn't matter. But, um, uh, Mm -hmm. Modesty is so important. And if we go back, like if we go back to the Bible with Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, the Lord made them coverings where they were covered, you know, below their knees. Anything that was, yeah, I think it was below their knees. You know, if it was showing their thigh or anything, they were basically considered naked. So I try to make sure I'm, I'm covered at all times. Mm -hmm. So and that's another thing so like I started I don't know if you noticed but um I make my own clothes now so all my dresses I make them because I was having a problem going to town you know trying to find stuff so I just started making my own stuff so I know I'm covered everything's right yeah I actually um I actually remember when you started sharing on Instagram how you would take I don't know how fast you did it, but you would say like, I didn't have anything really to wear. So I whipped this up right before church and right. I would just laugh like, Oh my goodness, that is not my strong suit. Like sewing is not my thing. I could probably draw your dress like <laughs> on a piece of paper, but then as far as like sewing, it will not look how you made it. So can you share, like, how did you learn how to sew? Are you self-taught? Was it something that you did as a kid? So I don't really know how to sew. <laughs> um, I started following this girl on YouTube. Her name was uh, Misha. So she would take, like, a skirt she had to make her skirt or a top she had to make her top. So that's, my, that's how I made my clothes. A shirt that I have, I cut the sleeves out, out of it where um I can make my top and then usually usually like a lot of skirts are circle skirts and those are like the easiest ones you can make because you're just doing your waist measurement and your length but other than that um I use a skirt and a top to make my clothes yeah well that's brilliant that's, yeah, I don't a, know that's a good hack <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah you shared about your fitness journey and I know you share that a lot on Instagram how did that happen, you getting started with, with fitness and then being comfortable enough to sharing that, to share that? Okay, so I've always, like, worked out or was part of a sport. So in high school, I was on the track team. I was on the wrestling team. So it was, yeah, me and three other girls. We were on the boys' wrestling team. And, like, I was the first female in North Carolina to make it to the state. So I was excited about that. But I guess when I was younger, <laughs> I always said I didn't want to be a like a big old lady. So <laughs> I've always got it worked out. So it, it wasn't anything new. And I did have to get comfortable with like doing the videos because I have to make sure like I'm doing the workouts right. And I would I would like to be certified to be a personal trainer one day. But um that's I just like working out. I like keeping my body in shape. 
I think that's awesome. And I think you sharing that part of your life is just amazing because I think there are a lot of girls out there who need to see more examples of that. Um, that you can still take care of your body. You can still work out and still be modest and that it's okay to still be covered and exercise that you don't have to compromise just because you want to exercise. So when did you get started sharing your fitness on Instagram? What made you want to share that and, you know, put that out there for people? I think I started, I don't know actually when I started on Instagram, but I started on Facebook because I actually had a workout page on Facebook. It was simple fitness for you. And that was back in 2010. And then I was going like full, full force with it. So it was more so of a stress reliever for me. So that's when I actually started putting the videos together and trying to inspire other people to work out. And it really is inspiring. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for your story and your journey. I think it's just so amazing what God did in your life. And I wanted to just give you a moment. Is there anything that you feel compelled to share to those listening? I have mainly a young audience of young ladies. Um, I have ladies of all ages, whether it's modesty or about self-control or about, you know, having faith, like staying, staying in church and trusting God. Do you have anything that you would like to share with those listening that might inspire them? So let me, let me just say this. This is something that I shared a a while back. So like the arrow, we are pulled back and plunged forward. So a trial or a test cannot stop us because we're warriors in the kingdom. So I would just say, no matter what you face, stay strong. So no matter what comes our way, you know, God will always be our strength. He will always be our shield and he will always be our protector. So keep moving forward. Greater things are ahead. Greater things are always ahead. Yeah, I love that. That's so encouraging. Well, thank you so much for, you know, being on the podcast and sharing your story and sharing your heart with us. Can you just tell the listeners where they can find you on Instagram? Okay, so I am Lumbee Fit Skirt Girl on Instagram. If um, I usually post workouts, funny stuff, or um, just dresses that I make. So if you want to follow me, that's where you'll find me at. It's Lumbee Fit Skirt Girl. Thank you so much, Azrity. Oh, you're welcome. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, would you take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram stories, tagging me at Hello Awesome Ministries? It will encourage me that you were blessed. Also, don't forget to leave a review and subscribe so you can tune into future episodes. To learn more about Hello Awesome, head to HelloAwesomeMinistries.com. Until next time, keep your chin up, beautiful.